Hello everyone and welcome to this very first tutorial here on mediocompositions.com. Now as promised today we're going to take a look at the very basics in Blender and I'm going to show you around the user face a little bit. Now please keep in mind that I'm Swiss so I will struggle with English a little bit but the reason I'm doing it anyway is because it's just a great exercise and I love talking English because it's just an awesome language. Anyway um, I also thought about creating a tutorial on how to um, download and install Blender. But then I thought that's just way too simple. So instead I just made a written tutorial for those who have trouble with that. Because um, if you're not very used to working with a computer, um, it can probably be a bit um, troublesome. Um, yeah, it's on my webpage, amadeocompositions.com, under section Tutorials. But for those who've already installed it, you should now have an icon like this on your desktop or somewhere in your startup menu or whatever. So just open Blender. And this is pretty much um, what you're going to face. Now, this looks a bit confusing at first. And I recommend we make a few adjustments before doing anything else. So, yeah. In order, to, in order to do that, just click somewhere outside the square <coughs> to make it disappear, for example, over here. And now your scene should look some, somewhat like this, actually. Got a little bit mistake here. Um, and now, under File and User Preferences, you can make a few adjustments. And there are, is a few things that, th there are a few things that have to be considered here. You can see this button here, Save as Default. And whenever you press that, your whole um, scene with everything, with all your models and your settings and everything will be um, stored as its default configuration. So whenever you open Blender, whenever you open a new window of Blender, it's going to load up all the things that you have um, adjusted right now. So. It is important that before doing anything else, before um, moving around your scene or doing anything, you go into the user preferences and you make a few adjustments and then you save as default. And the things I'm going to change is actually, um, one, one of them is in the interface. And there you have two things. The first one is zoom to mouse position. And the second thing is rotate around selection. If you have them unchecked, just check them. I'm going to show you right after this um, what it's all about. And the third thing I'd like you to um, change is under editing. And that is this thing here, undo. So check global undo on, in case it isn't checked already. And make sure you increase steps to 64. And what that means is just that whenever you made a mistake or something, you can go back with a control set as in any other program. And the steps are actually the number of, of, of times you can go back. So by default it is at about, I think, 32. And, you know, you could as well go to 64 because it isn't really um, bothering anyone. And there have been numerous times where I was quite, quite glad I could use 64 steps. And there, have, there, have even be, there have even been times when 64 was still not enough. But that's usually the fault of the user, not of the program. So once you've done, you've made those adjustments, just um, click on Save as Default. Okay. Now, to um, get rid of some of the confusion here, for now we're just going to focus on this part of your, of, of Blender. And this part is called 3D Viewport. Okay, and as its name already uh, um, tells, it's the 3D space of Blender. And in here you can see a cube, a camera, and a lamp. And in order to rotate around your scene, just um, press the middle mouse wheel, or your third mouse button, I guess, and uh, drag your mouse around. And in order to zoom in and out, just um, scroll your mouse wheel. Now, about the adjustments we've made before. Rotate around selection means that whenever you select something, in this case, in this cube, and then you rotate with your middle mouse wheel, it will rotate around that selection. 
And by the way, you can select things by right-clicking on them. For example, this cube, or this lamp, or this camera. And now, since the camera is selected, if I rotate, it rotates around your camera. This is a very handy thing. Um, and yeah, should you not like it, you can always change it in the user preferences, as shown before. And the second thing we adjusted was this scrolling thing, as I, sh as I told before, as I told you before, when it always um, moves towards where your mouse is. And that is just very handy because sometimes you have a large scene and you scroll by accident and you're just somewhere completely else and it's just annoying. So once those, once those adjustments are made, let's get into um, some other things. To your left you can see um, the toolbar, okay, this, this, this tool shelf here. And to your right you can see this plus sign over here. Now if we click on the plus sign, there's another bar, another toolbar appearing. However, this one is called properties panel, okay? So this is your toolbar, tool shelf, and this is the properties panel. And you can always uh, make them appear or disappear by just dragging it, dragging them over to, to one of the sides, and they disappear and have leave this plus sign here. However, um, as always, it is way more comfortable to use shortcuts to achieve those things. And the shortcuts for those actions are N and T. Okay, so N, um, make, N makes this um, properties panel disappear and reappear, and T makes the same thing with the object tools, uh, with the toolbar. Okay, and one thing I can already promise you is that if you're able to memorize as many shortcuts as possible, you will be much more productive. Because if you think about it, if I want to make this properties panel disappear, just press N. It's very fast, and if you have to actually do it manually, you always lose a lot of time. And also, if you don't use shortcuts, every action is kind of, um, it kind of stops your um, flow of thought, so to say, okay? So I'm making something here, and then, oh, I want to use this button, for example. Then I have to actually look away, navigate there, and it's just uh, quite bothersome. So instead, just always try to use shortcuts whenever possible. Okay. Now, um, for now, we're going to focus on this uh, toolbar over here, so just um, hide the Properties panel with pressing N on your keyboard. And you can see a couple of options here, okay? Uh, now, one other thing I just noticed is that my 3D cursor is here somewhere in space. Yours is probably right in the center of your object over here. So, whenever your 3D cursor is in the wrong spot, just hit Shift-C and it'll go back to its center. But since yours already there, um, don't worry about it. Okay. Now, as I said, you can select things with right-clicking on them. And if you right-click on them and the, you, you keep your left uh, right mouse button clicked, you can actually drag them around, okay? However, you have hardly any control over where you drag them. Same goes for this cube or for the lamp. <coughs> now, you can see a couple of options over here, and the first three are three are Translate, Rotate, and Scale. So if you hit the Translate button, you can actually do the same thing as we did before with just right-clicking on the things and dragging them around. You can reposition them wherever you want. With uh, Rotating, you can actually select an object and rotate it around its origin, its center point, so to say. The origin is um, shown, presented as this orange um, a dot right in the middle of the object in this case. Or here it is in the back of, um, of the camera or in the center of your lamp. And with, th with a scale, you can actually scale your object up or down. However, as you might have noticed already, if we select this translate button here, and we move our mouse up. We can only move our object so far because after that we're going to hit the border of our screen. Same goes for scaling. If you want to scale it, you kind of hit a border pretty soon. So this is quite annoying and in order to avoid that, instead of using those buttons, just use shortcuts, okay? And if you hover over one of those functions, you can see shortcut G 
or shortcut R or in this case S. So instead of actually using those buttons, just press those shortcut, shortcuts on your keyboard. So with G, you can actually move it around. With, with uh, S, you can scale it. And with R, you can rotate it. And now you no longer have this limitation by, uh, because this limitation about hitting the border because you can position your mouse right in the center of your object and then uh, move it around so it is always exactly where your mouse is. And one thing I want to mention too is about scaling, okay? So if you scale with the shortcuts, S, you can scale your object. And dependent on where your mouse is when you hit S, um, the scaling is more or less sensitive, okay? So if you position your mouse right here and you hit S and now you move your mouse around, you can scale it quite a lot with quite um, a small distance uh, made with your cursor. So right now if I move my cursor across uh, for like five centimeters or two inches, you have already a huge cube. If you position your mouse over here and you hit S, it's only um, a very small difference. Okay, then one, or one other thing to note is that usually you don't just want to um, scale the whole object like this or just translate it without any control, but you want to um, do those things um, with one of those axes as reference. So we can say, for example, I want to um, translate this cube along the set axis. And to do that, just uh, grab your set axis with your left mouse button, and you can move it only across the set axis. Same goes for Y and X. But once again, you can also do this so by using shortcuts. So just uh, press G on your keyboard. And now you press Z, X, and Y. And the same goes for rotating. If you press C, it's around the C axis, X around the X axis, and Y around the Y axis. And with scale, the same thing, Y, X, and C. No, Y, X, Y. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, or with shortcuts, S, X, and so on. Now, those are your basic um, object manipulation options, so to say. Now, the next thing you can see here is origin. And as I told you before, the origin is actually this, this orange dot in the middle of your object, or in the back of your camera and so on. And the origin is quite important because it's actually, um, for, for example, the point around which your object um, um, rotates, or the point according to where it's scaled and so on. And therefore, it is important to know how to reposition um, your origin exactly to where you want it. And as you might have just noticed, I accidentally clicked left mouse button, so I moved my 3D cursor. Okay. However, once again, to position your 3D cursor accurately with left clicking in your scene is pretty difficult because um, you have to, you don't know where it is on which axis, you just no, it's it's here, but with your right to see, ah, it's actually here. It's you don't have complete control, okay? So in order to change that, you can um, reposition your 3D cursor by hitting Shift S, and that's called the snap options. And now you have a couple of options here, and we'll concentrate on the lower four for now. Cursor to selected, center, grid, and active. And important for us is mainly the cursor to select it. And if you hit that, you can see your cur 3D cursor reappears um, exactly where the origin is of the object you've just selected. And this is quite important to know. And as you might remember, to reposition your cursor, just hit Shift C. And now it's back in the center of your cube. Or actually not in the center of your cube, but in the center of your whole scene, where the axes meet. And the cube is just there by, co by coincidence, because it is there by default. Okay, <coughs> now to um, make your or rearrange your origin, just select an object, 
and this is actually the origin you want to reposition. So let's say you want to have this origin, um, for example, where the lamp is. Usually not something you want, but in this case um, we do. So select your camera, now hit Shift S, cursor to select it, and now select your cube once again with the right click, hit go to origin, and select origin to 3D cursor because this red and white um, circle is your 3D cursor. However, once again, we don't like to use buttons, so we'll use shortcuts. And you can see it's Shift, Control, Alt, C. So select your um, cube and hit Shift, Control, Alt, C. And now you have this menu here. And we want to uh, set the origin to 3D cursor, as mentioned before. And you can see now the 3D cursor is exactly where the lamp is. And now if you rotate your cube, it actually rotates around the lamp because the lamp is exactly where the origin of our cube is. As I said, not something you usually want, but just imagine um, if you want to like model and rig a uh, an engine, and you have like all those different um, pieces of your engine, and all of them have some some kind of center of rotation, then it is quite handy to. Um, move the origin of all those parts to where they are supposed to rotate ar around. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And you can also have origin to geometry or geometry to origin. Now we're going to worry about those things a little bit later because um, in order to use them efficiently you need to be able to use edit mode and right now we haven't, we didn't cover that already. So now you can see the next couple of options. Duplicate object, delete and join. Now, um, duplicate object does pretty much what it, what, it, what, it's, what it implies. You just hit the button and you have two cubes and you can reposition the second one wherever you want. But once again we don't like buttons so we'll use shortcuts. So select your cube, hit shift D on your keyboard and now you did the exact same thing. And now you can also, by the way, use X, Y, or C to reposition um, your cube. And as you can notice, as you might notice, um, the axes don't no longer go through the center of your scene, but through this 3D cursor. And that's actually what they always do, just before um, the, ax the, the 3D cursor was in the center of your scene. So let's move it over here, for example. Now you have actually two cubes. And as you can see, the origin is relative to the cube at the same place where it was before. Okay. Now, the delete function is also pretty self-explaining. It just deletes things. So if you select this lamp and you hit delete, you can, you're can you asked if you actually want to delete it and you can press OK, delete it. Or you can use X on your keyboard or delete on your keyboard. And if you hit it, it's actually gone. And now, since we actually want the lamp, let's just um, click, uh, press Control Z on our keyboards. Control Z, and it's here again because we, we, it, the action before was undone. Okay. Now this third button here is called it's called Join. Now, if you have two um, cubes selected, and you hit this Join button, what happens is um, they are merged into one object. Okay. Just click it and now you can see you only have one button. You can no longer select the other one because they are actually one object. However, as you might notice, um, the origin of the f this one is just gone. And if we press Control Z, we can go a step back and just hit it as, as many times as you need to get back to where we were. Here we go. Okay. Now you can see once again two origins. And actually, if you want to merge them, you have to consider that the origin of the one selected last will be taken. So if you have this cube selected, now you select with Shift select, by the way, to select multiple objects, press Shift and then select with, with right click. You can see the first object is um, um, outlined with a darkish orangish color and the second one with a light orange. 
and light orange is, is always the actual selection. So if you select the camera plus this lamp plus the cube plus this cube, you can see only this cube is selected in a light light orange and all the others are a darker orange. Now if you select those two and you hit control uh, if you hit join or um control J, that is the shortcut, you can see only the origin of the second um object will be considered. Okay. Now <coughs> um next on our list are shading options, your first shading options, and you have smooth and flat. Now in order to explain those, a cube isn't very handy, so just let's let's just delete both cubes. Let's reposition our 3D cursor in the center with Shift C. And now let's actually add our first object. And in order to do that, just hit Shift A and you can see um, a couple of options here. And the first one says mesh. Now let's not worry about all the others, let's just worry about the mesh for now. And let's add a monkey. Okay, and I can see um, kind of a monkey head appears. Um, it's actually the monkey called Suzanne. Um, yeah. Now, because it's facing directly into the sky and that's not really what I want, so let's go into um, side view. And um, actually, let me explain to you what your numpad's for. With your numpad, you can actually navigate around your scene in increments or um, select a certain views. So if you press 1 on your numpad, you're in front view. In front view. If you hit 3, you're in side view. If you hit 7, you're in top view. Now if you hit control 1, you're in back view. Control 3, side view, but from the left, not from the right. And control 7 is bottom view. Oh, and one other thing I just noticed about navigation. We talked about rotating and about zooming, but you can also translate your whole scene. So in, or in order to do that, just hit shift, middle mouse wheel, and now you can drag it around without rotat rotating. And another important one is on your numpad is uh, the button 5. If you hit 5, you toggle between orthographic view and perspective view. I think that's what they're called. So um, this is perspective view, and you can see Objects closer to the camera are just bigger, and the further away, the smaller they get. Um, and if you hit 5, everything is the same size, no matter how close or how far away you are. So this is less realistic. However, it's way more comfortable to work this way when modeling and so on. So um, press 5 on your numpad to toggle into this simplified view, so to say, um, because it's just much easier to work with. And now, um, about the increments, if you hit, for example, 1 to go into front view, and now you hit either 4 or 6, you can rotate around your, in this case, monkey head, in increments, okay? Uh, something I rarely ever use, however, it has been, it's been handy a few times in the past, I guess. Okay, now to the problem at hand. We want to rota rotate our monkey so that it doesn't just stare into the sky. So hit 3 on your numpad. <laughs> now you're inside view. Now hit R on your keyboard to rotate it. So it's approximately like this. And now let's actually translate it so it's it actually kind of sits on the ground plane, on this grid floor. Perfect. Now, about the shading options. If I press flat, and you can see this one does not have any sh uh, any shortcuts at all. You have to use uh, the, those buttons. If I press flat, nothing happens. Uh, nothing happens, and that's because um, flat is like the default shading option. However, if you press smooth, you can see it looks quite weird, and that's because what Blender is trying to do is quite simple. It tries to make those edges disappear. So right now, if you look at this, those edges look much smoother smoother than before compared to flat. However, um, if you look over the edge, it doesn't really change anything. And that's because this option does not actually change the geometry at all. It just um, uses a different way to shade your quads. I'm going to talk more about those later. But if you look over the edge, you can still see it's very sharp. However, if you look right on top, 
um, on its top, you can see it looks much less pointy and looks much less sharp. Um, and this is actually a very handy option because usually in order to get a smooth, smooth surface you'd have to add lots lots of vertices and lots lots of data and geometry to make it appear smooth but no matter how much you'd add you'd always have like um, a quad pattern showing you know and with smooth you can even with quite little geometry um, create a smooth looking in this case monkey head um, yeah especially combined with a subdivision surface you get great results um, but more on subdivision surface and other modifiers later. Okay, now the next option, uh, it's called keyframes. You might know that from other programs, um, it's about animating, so it's a little bit advanced. But I thought let's just make a very short um, example here. Um, let's say we want to have our monkey move from here where it is right now. Let's go to front view with numpad 1 to, let's say, over here. So, uh, take a look at this timeline here. This is the timeline. And you can see you have kind of a green line here. And that is frame 0. Now, if you move that, uh, if you click somewhere somewhere else in this timeline, for example here, you can see now we are on frame 40 and each frame is actually kind of a picture and you can see right now 250 frames are highlighted and with as you might know to get a fluid motion so a human being cannot see that it's actually um, made of uh, made up of frames in order to achieve that you need to uh, 25 frames per second approximately or maybe 24 now that means that with 250 frames we can only animate 10 seconds. And um, as you might find out later, um, rendering can take quite a lot of time. So in order to make just one frame, you can it can take up to several minutes. So in order to make a man, uh, an animation of 10 seconds, 250 frames, it, you could easily um, it could easily take uh, quite a few hours to actually actually calculate the anima the animation. <coughs> uh, but for now. What we need to do is we need to save the position of the monkey on this frame 0 and let's say on frame 100. So the complete um, translation will occur within uh, 4 seconds or 100 frames. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, in order to do that we'll use um, those buttons. You can see insert keyframes and remove keyframes. So for now let's insert a keyframe. And now you can see this menu. And this is uh, fairly advanced, so let's just focus on the first three for now. Location, rotation, scaling. And those are the exact same buttons as you can see over here. Um, and actually with, um, with those, you kind of save location, rotation, scaling into your animation timeline, okay? So if I hit location, it will save the location that it has right now as a keyframe and this way you can animate things. And the way to go about it is, is quite simple. You click on frame 1 and then you hit Control i uh, Sorry about that, that was the wrong... You hit just I apparently, uh, just I and you can see the same menu as before, so I is the shortcut. And now you just select location. And now you can see in your timeline you now have a yellow line over here. And if you now open the properties panel, which would be N on your keyboard, and you select the monkey, okay, for some reason it didn't actually save the keyframe. So once again, let's press I on our keyboard and then location. Okay, now you can see your monkey selected, you have a yellow line in your timeline, and in lo under location, with your monkey selected, you can see everything is yellow. Now, what this means, this actually uh, describes your, the location of your object uh, relative to the center point, I guess. And you can easily see that if you move it across the c-axis, the closer you get to the, to the, to the center, uh, the closer it gets to zero. 
okay? And if it's yellow, that means that on that particular frame that you're on right now, in this case, frame one, there's a keyframe. If you go to frame, let's say 100, over here, you can see it turned green. And that means that the monkey's location is keyframed somewhere, but not on this particular frame. But we actually want that. We want to make a second keyframe on frame 100, because that is the final position of our monkey. So let's first move it across the um, along the x-axis, over here for example, and then let's just um, add another keyframe. So once again press I and select location. Now you can see it turned once again yellow and you have a second um, yellow line in your timeline. So now if you go back to zero with this button here, you can see it's once again in its default position. And now if we if we blah, and now if we press play with this button here, you can see it moves fully automated without us doing anything. And that's what animation is all about. Now we just want to um, animate or we just want to play through those 100 frames here. So just um, insert 100 here, and as you can see, it plays through from zero to 100 and it does that over and over again. Okay, and as you might guess, you have this um, other button here, remove. What it does is the exact opposite, it actually just uh, deletes the keyframe. So if you're on frame one, just hit Alt-I, which is the uh, shortcut for deleting, and you can see delete keyframe, and it's gone. And same goes for this final, for 100, Alt-I, delete keyframe and it's gone. But it's apparently I just noticed that the yellow line just stays unless until you move your cursor now it's gone. So now if you press play nothing happens. And as you might notice um, the monkey actually stays where the keyframe deleted last um, implies. So yeah. If we would want him to be and its default position, we'd have to first delete the second keyframe. We would have needed to first delete the second keyframe and then the first keyframe, yeah. So let's go back to frame one. And let's, actually, uh, let me show you one other option with the uh, snap options. Right now, my 3D cursor is in the center of my scene, but in case it is not, I was just um, press shift C. And now select the monkey and press shift S um, those are once again the snapping options. And now instead of cursor to select it, what, which we did last time, um, click on selection to cursor, which is the other way around, so your monkey is now exactly in the center of your scene. Okay, now the next thing is already fairly advanced, it's motion path. Um, and what that does is it is used also for animating, and it actually um, calculates a line which represents... Um, well, actually, let me just show you. Let's just um, minimize... I'm going to minimize this window. I'm going to open a new Blender window. And I'm going to open... Let me just see... A new Blender file. I'm going to open... Um, then I go to... Character Driven. This is my model. Now let's go to object mode to our th fourth layer. I'm going to teach you more about those things uh, la uh, later on. So just it's just important to explain this calculate path and clear path function. Now let's go into pose mode and let's just see what is animated here. Okay, it's already got an animation going. Perfect. And as you can see, it is quite hard to, to guess um, just exactly how smooth the animation is. So in order to know for sure, just press, select all the bones with A, for example, and um, hit Calculate Path. And now you can see what it does. It actually just draws lines. Um, and those lines represent the path. Uh, on which your objects move, the way you animated them. And if you can and you can, if you can see any irregularities, like for example some bumps in them or some edges and stuff, and that way you know that you don't have a very smooth animation, you can change those things. And with clear path, 
the opposite it just deletes them it's again so it calculates them and deletes them okay now let's just um, close this th scene once again and let's go back to our previous file and let's take a look at the next option it's repeat and repeat last and history now this has nothing at all to do with undoing things okay when I press repeat last it won't undo anything so let's go to front view with one let's translate our monkey up a little bit doesn't really matter and now let's uh, press repeat last and it just moves it up and up and up however many times you want and the same goes for history but in this case as you can see with history you can select all the things you did in the past and do them again so for example let's reposition our monkey in the center now let's move him up let's move him again over here let's rotate it about 180 degrees let's move it down and let's move it to the right a little bit again now in history you can see translate translate rotate translate translate now if I hit rotate then uh, the rotation I did before will be repeated once again so now the last thing I did was the repeating so it will do this is actually now the new um, last thing I did and then I can also say I want to translate it the way I did it before over here and so on and so forth this is actually something I've I think I never really used before because I don't know you, you just don't now one thing to experiment I don't know if that is possible I'm just gonna know, look right away um, let's duplicate the monkey let's rotate this one for 90 degrees let's select this one and hit repeat last oh, I can see this is actually quite handy I, f I find you can just um, do it with one object, a couple of things, and then you can just use repeat last to uh, add it to all the other objects. And now the final thing is grease pencil. And that's also something I think I've never used before. But now that I'm actually doing uh, tutorials, it might be helpful because with this you can actually draw things onto your scene. So for example, you can say, this is monkey number one. And this thing over here is monkey number two. And um, right now you can see it is drawn onto a plane that goes through your 3D cursor. Okay, So if you position your 3D cursor over here and over here, so it is somewhere below the monkey, and you now do the same thing again, you can see it is on a plane going through this 3D cursor once again. And about the shortcuts, I must say I've never used them before, so it would be D, left mouse. So I'm going to press D and left mouse. And indeed, you can just uh, keep D pressed, and then you can draw things onto your scene. And the same probably goes with line. Line would be Control D, left mouse. And with this option, you can actually make lines that are perfectly straight. So Control D, and then you can actually make a line. Okay, now this poly drawing, um, that just means you can make a couple of connected straight lines. So if you click that, you can go like this. You always um, set points and it autom automatically connects the last point with the new one. Um, and you um, escape with, uh, well, escape. And as I can see right now, you can you also have a shortcut for that with control D and right mouse and once you're in this um, mode you can also use left or right mouse button to uh, make your next point and I think also rather self-explaining is the erase function just yeah just um, click on your left mouse button and move it over some of the parts you want to delete. Uh, actually I just found out how to delete things. You can draw you can draw it onto that plane as mentioned before and then you can see in your properties panel it actually creates uh, a new frame and if you just um, delete it it's going to disappear. Okay, now um, 
we covered most or all the, the whole toolbar for now. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at either the toolbar in opt edit mode or in this menu bar down here. So stay tuned for that and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or feedback or whatever, as always, um, post it. Please, please post it in the comment section below each video, and I'll try to consider consider your ideas. So thank you for watching, and see you next time.